Welcome to this GearWig video tutorial on creating basic war machine terrain. In this video we'll create three very basic terrain pieces. We'll create an elevated hill, a wall, and a forest. Generally speaking I like to keep my terrain nice and simple. War Machine is a very precise game that requires a lot of exact measurements and has models that prefer to be on flat surfaces. For these reasons, I prefer terrain that isn't too complicated. While it can be fun to play on terrain that has a bunch of crazy jagged edges or deep craters and such, each of those little terrain elements is sort of a dead area in War Machine, an area where a model can't really stand. And while a couple pieces like that might be fun, when most of your terrain is full of dead areas like that, the game becomes almost unplayable. So we're going to make these three pieces about as playable as possible uh, while also being really easy, lazy, and cheap to make. These are our basic materials here. We're going to use a 2x2 two two sheet of polystyrene. This is an inch thick. A lot of polystyrene foam is 2 inches thick, but I went with the inch thick one. I find the 2 inch thick stuff a little more difficult to handle and makes terrain that's a little too big for our game. Polystyrene is nice. It's very light and yet durable. It doesn't crumble. It'll last a while and makes for good three-dimensional terrain. Uh, I bought this piece at a hardware store. Uh, it's mainly used for insulation, and it was about six bucks. So this one two-by-two two piece could make several different terrain pieces for not a lot of money. We're going to very simply build our wall out of these floor tiles. I also bought this strip at a hardware store. It was about five dollars, and comes with these nice little ceramic bricks that we can build into a wall. The official wall template is half an inch thick and four inches long and I want to build something very similar. So I picked these particular floor tiles because they are about a half inch thick. I'll be using this flat condensed particle board material for our forest. I like the forest materials to be thin and lightweight when possible but strong. Stronger than, say, cardboard. Cardboard would deteriorate over time, and terrain usually takes a beating, so it needs to be strong. I got this stuff at a craft store. Uh, it's just a, it's not quite as strong as I might have liked. It's a little too close to cardboard. I think maybe the perfect material is like the kind of wood that clipboards are made out of, uh, but for that material you need usually a stronger saw, like a jigsaw or something, to cut them into shape, and I was able to use a hacksaw with this and it cut really easily so it turned out all right. We'll start by cutting our polystyrene for our hill-like shape. I used a small hacksaw to get this piece out of our larger piece. Be sure to use a mask when working with this raw polystyrene. You uh, Little pieces will break off and you don't want to inhale them. That's bad for your lungs so use a mask. Polystyrene is pretty strong but you can cut it with like a steak knife uh, I'm using this little hacksaw, and it cuts right through it nicely, so this isn't very difficult. I decide to keep the slopes on the side almost perfectly vertical. We could cut nice, even, gradual slopes, or any sorts of designs or shapes into the sides. But I like my elevated terrain to be sort of very stark and binary, where at one step you're on the ground, and then the next step you're on the hill. Uh, the way the rules work for elevated terrain the bonuses for it don't really kick in until you're an inch off the ground. So a gradual slope leading up to that inch might look cool, but it doesn't really have any game effect and just causes your models to tip over. Well, we got the shape we like, and this is a pretty good blobby hill shape. We'll notice it has all these rough edges from the saw and little flaky bits. Uh, first of all, this provides nice sort of rock texture for the hill when it's done. So it'll look sort of like a rocky hill right out of the gate. And we can just use the sandpaper to get off all the flaky bits and smooth it out. And even with these very simple steps, you have something that sort of looks like a rocky elevated hill. Of course, you could go bananas here and carve out your own cool shapes and jagged edges and such. So the sky's the limit here, but at the most simple, simple steps, it looks pretty good. My plan for this terrain piece is to have the sides here look gray and rocky and then I'll use flock along the top to make it look grassy. We can just paint acrylic paint right onto this and it'll take it, you don't have to prime it. But because the surface is so porous, it will take a lot of paint. 
uh, the first layer of paint, a lot of the pink will show through, and you just have to go over it again and again. And it's sort of a large surface area, so it's going to require a lot of paint. You wouldn't want to use expensive model paint. If you had some large amount of cheap acrylic paint and a large brush, you could do that easily enough and paint the whole thing gray. It would be easiest if I could just spray it gray with a primer spray. I could do that in one minute, have it all gray. But the problem with that is uh, the chemicals in the aerosol can will interact with the polystyrene and cause it to melt. Some aerosols won't cause it to melt, but most will. Uh, the one I happen to have will cause it to melt, and that's going to be a problem. So the next step will be to seal it with some PVC or Elmer's glue. We'll use a mixture of about 50% glue to 50% water. We'll use a large brush here and we'll liberally coat our polystyrene with this glue mixture. We want to get it all over the surface. We want to cover every inch along the top, the sides, and the bottom. We want a complete coating of glue so when we spray it later, none of it gets to the polystyrene and causes it to melt. I use a brush to try to fill in any gaps where the glue might not have covered. And then we leave it to dry for a couple hours. We want to make sure it's completely dry before we spray any primer on it. While that's drying, we can get to work on our linear obstacle. We're going to be piling our floor tile here into three rows, one on top of each other. We'd like the rows to be offset a little bit so it's not a brick laid directly onto another brick. We want it to sort of be off kilter. So we'll use these half tiles to set that up. The first row we will build will just use the larger tiles. And it'll look like this. And then we'll start the next row with a half tile. That way every larger tile we put in will be a little off center. And it'll look more like a natural wall. So it'll look like this when it's done. It's about four inches long, about a half inch thick. It's great for war machine. We'll just take some super glue and glue all these bricks together onto each brick next to it. These floor tiles are porous and they take super glue really well. We'll use it liberally, there's no reason not to, uh, and it'll hold just fine. I plan to prime this gray and then use some dry brushing to make it look like stone. But honestly, just right out of the box like this, it doesn't look too bad. If all you did was glue this together and use it in your War Machine games, uh, that wouldn't be terrible. While that wall is drying, we can get to work on our forest here. I used the hacksaw to get the initial piece of forest and then these scissors here to clip out the shape. Uh, if I were using a stronger piece of stock wood, I wouldn't be able to use scissors for this. It would have to all be done by hacksaw or jigsaw. I use a modeling knife to clean out the edges. I'd like to keep it about as smooth as possible. My plan for this piece is to mostly use grass flock to make it look green, uh, but I'd like a couple brown patches in there that maybe look like a, a path or something. So we'll end up gluing some sand onto the model before we prime it, and then I'll paint the sand brown so it'll look like some dirty patches in a green forest to add just a little bit of flavor for without a lot of work or money. We'll use PVC glue again at about a 50-50 mixture between that and water, and we'll liberally spread it on the areas that I want to look brown. Sort of want a path down the middle, and then maybe a couple other brown edges on the sides, just to add a little variety so it isn't just a pure blob of green, although that would be fine too, really. But this is easy, so we'll try it. I'm just using play sand, like something you'd get at an art store or a toy store. Uh, for the sand effect, you could use whatever you like here. Um, GW makes a uh, Strickland mud paint that's kind of cool for this. It has little particles built right into it, and you can just paint right onto it. You can even just grab some fine sand from outdoors, and it'll work fine. The glue here will hold the sand on to our board, but it won't really keep it on, and if you hit it with your finger, it'll rub right off. So we'll need to seal it in a couple different ways. We'll seal it in with the primer we use, with the paint that goes on top of it, and then with our final seal. 
So don't expect this sand to be really stuck on here until you're done with the terrain piece. But the next step will be to prime this gray. We'll prime right over the sand in the hope that we uh, hold it in place. We primed the other two terrain pieces and they came out like this. I just used a basic flat gray primer. And happily, our uh, hill terrain piece didn't melt so much. There were a couple little melty areas on the edge where the glue might not have been uh, perfect, but it was mostly solid, but that's great. And the other two pieces took to primer very well. For our next step, we'll just dry brush onto the stone areas a little bit. I want the side of the hill to look a little bit like stone, so I just very quickly dry brush some of these edges. Uh, the little particles in the polystyrene will pick out the dry brushing, and the edges will stand out, and it'll look just a little bit more like natural rock than a flat gray. Uh, I'm not going overboard here to make this look great. Just some very simple details uh, that take almost no time. I then use the same dry brush. This is a Fenrisian gray. It's sort of like a bluish gray that I'm using on stone here, and I use it very liberally on the wall. I want to catch all of these edges, and I want to leave little particles, little dry brushy particles, on the flat surfaces to make it look like stone. After this is heavily dry brushed, we're going to be just about done here. We'll put on a sealant later, but um, this is all the detail we're going to put onto the wall. For added detail, you could put a uh, green flock on the little cracks, make it look like moss, skulls, weapons, whatever. Uh, this is about as simple and basic a wall as you can make, and it was super easy and cheap. So, no real skill needed for any of this. Now that the forest has been primed, I want to paint the sand bits brown. You could have glued the sand on afterward and just used the natural sand color. That would have been easier. Uh, by spraying it gray and then painting it again brown, sort of add an extra step. Also, painting onto sand is tricky. You need to water down your paint a lot so it flows in between the sand, and you just need to use a bunch of a bunch of paint. You want to try to get all the gray out of here and make it all brown. So this can be kind of a pain in the butt. It might not be worthwhile. But after a, a couple super thin liberal applications of brown paint, we get it looking alright. I then use a green paint on the areas where I plan to put on flock grass. I use just one quick layer of green. It doesn't have to be perfectly solid. Some of the gray might show through. Uh, the point of this is that there might be tiny little gaps in between the flocked areas. When that happens, I don't want the gray to show through in between the green grass flakes. I want it to be green underneath as well. So one really quick base coat of green here just makes the flock look a little better. I just use thin green paint and do a rush job and get all the gray areas. So when we're done between the brown areas and the green areas, there shouldn't be any gray left. After it's dried, we'll use PVC glue again to put the grass flock on. I'm using the Citadel flock. Uh, it's good. Uh, grass flock is one of those things you uh, can't really make yourself. You just need to go out and buy it. You want the individual little grass specks to be super fine and super small. So you're really only going to get that by purchasing it, but it's usually pretty cheap. Uh, if you can't find it at hobby stores uh, specific to wargaming, you can find it in places that'll sell like model trains, train sets, stuff like that, uh, or you can just order it online. Uh, we're using the same 50-50 glue combination of uh, Elmer's glue and water, and we're laying it on really thick here. When it's done, we'll liberally sprinkle on a whole bunch of flock. I just do it over a paper plate here so I don't waste any. Uh, but I want to try for total coverage here over all of the green areas. And it looks sort of like that. I like this flock uh, that GW makes. It has a, enough little brown and red bits in it to add some variety so it's not just pure green. Uh, but we use the same method on the other side, just tons of glue and then we pour on a bunch of flock.
I used a layer of the same basic green paint on the top of the hill as well. We're going to be flocking this, so I wanted a layer of paint in case some of it came through the flock. And I used the same glue mixture. So just like the forest, we're dumping a bunch of glue on here. Uh, careful not to get it on the sides. Uh, and then we're going to liberally put flock. Just like before, I perch it over a paper plate just to hope to catch any excess flock that might spill off. And I lay it on pretty heavy, trying to cover as much of the surface as I can. After all the flock dried, it was time to finish the pieces. Here we can see it's been finished and now the flock doesn't rub off on my hand. We need some sort of finish layer because terrain gets used a lot. It gets bumped around, it gets brushed, it gets scraped. So even more so than models, you need a finished layer on each terrain piece. There are a couple different ways to do this. You can use more PVC glue. If we were to use it as a finish, we'd really water it down, maybe like four or five to one water to glue to get a really watery glue layer. And then we take a squirt bottle and just spray a mist of pure water on the terrain piece we were hoping to seal. And when it was just damp with a little water, we then apply the super thin glue layer. The glue then sort of spreads out quickly, and it doesn't leave uh, goopy white areas. It looks perfectly clear while leaving a layer of glue on top that would protect the model. I used an even easier, lazier way, and I just bought a $5 can of spray matte sealant. It was a Rust-Oleum brand sealant. I had never used it before, and I was afraid it might leave sort of a glossy sheen, even though it was a matte sealant. Uh, matte meaning it doesn't leave any kind of uh, gloss or effect on your train piece. Uh, so I sprayed it really, really heavily just to test to see if maybe it would leave behind an un unintended effect, and it did not. I uh, put way too much on these pieces, and even then it looked fine. And now they have a nice thick sealant on them. Uh, the grass doesn't flake, it stays right in place. Uh, and they're ready for some wear and tear. So these three pieces, as simple as they are, are done and ready for the tabletop. It turns out it's really easy, and it doesn't take a lot of time or money to make terrain pieces that are a significant upgrade than, say, the construction paper or felt patches you may have been using for forests and hills before. When making terrain specifically for War Machine, Always go for function before aesthetics. The terrain needs to work with the precise nature of the game. Models need to be able to measure their exact positions at all times, and you want to really minimize dead areas, areas where models can't stand upright. If you're looking for high-end terrain challenges with really artistic, cool, creative terrain, that's what obstructions are for. Make your buildings, your wrecks, your burnt-out factories, all that stuff. Obstructions are supposed to be specific dead areas on the battlefield, and that's where you can get really crazy. But for basic terrain like hills, walls, and forests, keep it simple. Keep it effective. Thank you for watching. For more guides, battle reports, and articles, check out GearWig.com. You can email me at boss at GearWig.com, or check out our Facebook or Twitter pages. If you want to help the site, tell a friend, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.